One of the most important components in the wedding process is wine. Wine is the first thing you see at engagement night as people grab their glasses and toast l'chaim. It is the object over which a couple gets married when the rabbi makes the blessings on a cup of wine under the chuppah. Later on in the festive meal, the wine is front and center again, getting more and more blessings recited over it. Why wine? Is it because Jews like to drink? Well, we like to eat more than we like to drink. Why not get married over a bagel, or pastrami on rye, or better, some matzo ball soup? That's more Jewish than white wine. Of course, there's a reason, and a really good one. Wine is actually symbolic of marriage itself. How? Every food has its own value, and if you mix that food with another of its kind, their combined value doesn't change much. For example, take an apple and mix it with other apples. You get apple juice, which has similar value to the apples themselves. Bananas, oranges, prunes, whatever. Mixing two foods usually doesn't exponentially increase their value. In fact, according to Jewish law, in regards to the blessings recited over foods, the blessing usually decreases in terms of significance as the food gets mixed with another, with one massive exception, grapes. While individual grapes have value, if you mix them together, you get wine, which causes an exponential increase in value. Think of the cost of a cluster of grapes compared to that of a bottle of wine. Now, every nuance of a Jewish wedding is filled with meaning because the rabbis used these customs to teach the couple timeless lessons. Wine was placed in the center to teach a basic tenant in a great marriage. Marriage unites two separate individuals, each with inherent value. The bride and groom each have their own backgrounds, experiences, family values, worldviews, each a world into themselves. They hang, if you will, on their own grapevine. And when the wedding is over, when the band stops playing and the wedding dress is back in the box, they reach an important crossroads. They can choose to either stay as individuals, looking out for their own needs, desires, and dreams. They can move their vines close to each other and share everything, finances, a home, children, and even a bedroom, but remain separate. Or they can choose another path, a harder, tougher, more amazing journey to marital happiness. They can give themselves to each other, they can transcend their identities as separate entities, sacrificing their needs for that of the relationship. They can crush their grapes together until it becomes a new entity. And as that couple stands under the chuppah, the wine delivers that supremely powerful message. You too are exponentially more valuable as one entity than as two separate individuals. You see, that's how God intended it. Genesis states, Al Kain Yazov Ish es Avi ves Imo Vedavak be Ishto Vehulabasar Echad. Man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Not two separate people, not just really close or even intertwined. One new being, one flesh. And that's the choice grapes or wine.